Sublime Text has been around for a while, and there are many versions floating around out there. Sublime Text 1, 2, 3, 3.1, 3.2. Coming soon, Sublime Text 4. Only when the new builds become publicly available, they're not going to have a 4 in their version number. In fact, they're not going to have a version number at all. So how are we going to keep track of what version of Sublime we're using? Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Oh, Dan Nerd here. Welcome to another Sublime Text tutorial video where the topic of today's uh, lesson is version numbers in Sublime Text and how they're kind of going away, but kind of not. We'll, we'll get into that. But this is something that is not unique to Sublime Text. Other software does it. As a matter of fact, other software by Sublime HQ does it as well. Sublime Merge, you may have noticed, it doesn't have any version number associated with it for the reasons we're going to be covering in this very video. And before we get into that, this is a great time to ask you the question of the day. Do you use Sublime Merge for your Git activities? And let me know down in the comments whether you do or don't use Sublime Merge. If you do use it, tell me why you love it. If you don't use it, tell me why you don't. And in either case, is there any topics on Sublime Merge that you'd like to see me covering here on the channel in an upcoming video? How to get the most out of it if you use it, how to get started with it if you're on the fence, let me know those down in the comments section as well. Now, when it comes to using software, any software, not just Sublime Text, there are generally more than one version of any particular piece of software available at any particular point in time, because developers of software are always fixing bugs in their software or adding new features, making other sorts of enhancements, maybe even just speeding things up or changing the visual flow of things. For that reason, as the person who's using that software, you want to be able to gauge of all of the versions of something that are available across the whole timeline of available versions where do you sit in this line? Are you closer to the current time where you're at the most recent version or are you further back in time? And if you are further back in time, you want to know exactly where you are back in time so that you can determine what happened in this interim area in between. What bugs were fixed? What features were added? What was changed here? Will your life be better? Because some software is paid software and you're going to be using your hard-earned dollars to purchase a new version. You're going to want to know what it is you're getting so that you can evaluate whether that's something that's useful to you. And there's a lot of different mechanisms for being able to affix yourself along this version timeline. None of these are particular to any specific type of software and in fact there's a lot of different ways to do it and some software uses multiple versions of each of these things pun mildly intended on the use of versions there for dialing in their uh, versions uh, for example we have sublime text 2 and sublime text 3 for example or I'm recording this in Windows version 10 but prior to that there was Windows version 7 and the latest version of Mac OS has a version of 11 but it also has a code name of Big Sur. And previous versions also had their own versions, 10 point whatever, and they had code names as well, like Snow Leopard and Mavericks and things of that nature. So there's multiple different names there. We're seeing names being used and we're seeing numbers being used, three, four, seven. But that doesn't tell the whole picture because, yeah, I'm using Windows 10 right now, but there's more than one version of Windows 10. There's many versions of Windows 10. And for that reason, there's one other thing that we can use here, and that is the build number. Now, build numbers aren't specific to Sublime HQ and their software. A lot of software uses build numbers in a variety of different ways. For example, if you happen to be using Windows 10 right now, you could hold down the Windows key and press R to open the Run dialog box, enter WinVer and hit Enter, and what you'll see is a dialog box that tells you information about your version of Windows, which says it's Windows 10, but also includes a OS build number, so you can uniquely identify exactly which of the many builds of Windows 10 you happen to have. The same thing applies to a lot of other software, including Sublime products like Sublime Text and Sublime Merge, which is what we're talking about right now. Now, in the case of Sublime Text and Sublime Merge, the build numbers are four-digit numbers. Depending on the software, you might see different things in there. Sometimes the build number is a reference to the date that a piece of software was actively released, which is a great way to place it at an exact point in time. The mechanism that build numbers are created and deployed with in Sublime products like 
Sublime uh, Text and Sublime Merge is somewhat of a black box. We're not the developers. From observation, we can see how it works. And if you were to use the command about from the command palette or from the menu, one of the things that appears in that about dialog box is the version of Sublime that you're running, if it has one. More again on that in just a moment because Sublime Text 4 isn't actually Sublime Text 4 at all. There's also a build number in there. And you can observe that the build number in Sublime products is a four digit number and the first digit it is the major version number. Builds of Sublime Text 2 are in the 2000s, builds of Sublime Text 3 are in the 3000s, and builds of Sublime Text 4, but not really, because there's not really a Sublime Text 4, but there is a Sublime Text 4. Again, keep watching. Have numbers in the 4000 range, and the numbers go up from there. Now, we know that every time a new build of one of these pieces of software is released, we see a new build number that's bigger than the previous build number that we saw, which allows us to compare and contrast what version we're running. If you ever reported a bug for something Sublime related, one of the questions that you get asked is, what build of Sublime are you using? That's the developer's way of saying, we want to know exactly what copy of Sublime you're running, what version, what features it has, so that we can tell whether the problem that you're having has been fixed or not, because perhaps you're using an older version and you're reporting something that's already been resolved. Apart from that, the number tends to go up. Now, on occasion, we have seen uh, the build number be manipulated in such a way that it aligns with the version numbers. For example, I think off the top of my head, the build number for Sublime Text 3.1 was somewhere in the vicinity of 3100. And I think some build numbers were skipped in that run-up to hit that actual number. We'll see if I actually got that right or not. You'll probably see something on the screen right now. If you look at the build numbers for Sublime Sublime Merge, you'll notice that right now they're in the 2000s, but back in the original builds that were first released, it was in the 1000s. We're actually in version 2 of Sublime Merge right now. And this brings us to the crux of why we're having this conversation right now, because when Sublime Text 4 comes out, it's not going to be Sublime Text 4. It's just going to be Sublime Text. It's not going to have a version number on it at all. And we're going to have to use the version, the build number to determine the version. Before we get into the details of that, though, one quick thing we want to cover here is the idea of development builds versus stable builds, and by extension, the development channel versus the stable channel. Builds in Sublime Text are arranged as either a stable build or a development build. A stable build is something that has been actively tested and is deemed to be rock solid. To the best of anybody's ability, all the known problems or re reproducible problems have been solved. It's ready for production work. The flip side of that coin is the bleeding edge development builds of Sublime Text, which have features that are currently in progress. And you would choose one of those if you want to test if bugs that you're seeing have been fixed that will be released at some point in the future. If you just want to be on the bleeding edge and trying things, or if like uh, me and other members of the Sublime Text community that are particularly active, you want to help guide development of Sublime Text. As an example, the original versions of Sublime Text 4 that were released were released in the Discord in November of 2019. If I'm remembering that correctly, it's been over a year. The original estimate was that it was only going to be a couple of weeks probably before that was made public, but we're here over a year and that hasn't really happened. It's not publicly official uh, or officially public, another way of saying that, on the web page yet. And that's because so much back and forth has gone on between the active package developers in the Discord and the developers of Sublime Text fine tuning and adding whole functionalities to the API of Sublime that the developers didn't originally intend to add tons and tons of new power. The sorts of features that you would learn about if you were to use the buttons down below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because the, all the new features in Sublime Text 4 are things we're going to be covering here on the channel, and you're probably not going to want to miss that if, like me, you're a Sublime Text fanatic. Builds of Sublime are thus built, uh, designated as either a development build or a stable build and put in one of those two update channels. Now, the upshot of this is this. When you originally download your copy of Sublime Text, if you're on Windows or uh, Mac OS, or when you're initially setting up your package manager, if you're on Linux and you're not using the tarball version, you have the decision of, will you get the stable version or the development version? You're choosing at that point whether you want to have only tested versions of things or whether you want to be on the bleeding edge and have the ability to test new features and see new things as they're coming in. 
that that decision puts you on either the stable channel or the development channel and the auto update mechanism will only update to other things in the same channel so development builds only update to uh, development builds stable builds only update to stable builds so you might run into a situation where you look at your build of sublime text it says it's build 3210 you look on the web page there's a build 3211 3211 is bigger than 3210 why am i not seeing an update here and the answer is different channel what actually happens is that development happens in the development channel. Every time a new build becomes available to the public, the build number goes up. Say, for example, landing at 3210. That version tests out to be good. All known problems are found. The people in the stable channel want to have that. So a brand new build with identical code, but a new build number, because it has to know that it's in a different channel, is created from the exact same source code, becomes build 3211 and goes out to stable people. So the golden rule of thumb here is determine right from the get, do you want to have only stable versions or do you want to use these development versions? Choose appropriately and then allow the auto updater to do its work for you and it'll keep you on the channel that you're interested in and keep the builds that you're interested in. Now, as a very quick aside on this whole conversation, I've been using development builds of Sublime Text for nigh on four years. I can count on one hand the number of times there was a problem significant enough that I had to back off one version and I can count on maybe one finger, possibly two, the number of times that it took longer than 24 hours for a build that fixed that problem to become available. So you could use the development versions realistically for production work a lot of the time. I've been doing that with Sublime Text 4 for the better part of a year and have had no problems whatsoever. But let's continue talking about that, shall we? This is editing Odet Nerd, breaking in on past Odet Nerd spiel to remind him that he forgot to mention something about the development channel versus the stable channel. And that is that the stable channel is available to anybody because those are stable builds. You can even use those to evaluate if you're not currently a licensed user. However, development builds are a licensed user only privilege. So if you want to use a development build to be on the bleeding edge, test things, see if bugs have been fixed, you need to be a licensed user. And the builds of Sublime Text, which have, as of right now haven't been made publicly available on the web page are being made available in the discord those are development builds so in order to play with them you need to have a sublime text license even a sublime text 3 license will do because the reason we're having this discussion right now is that when sublime text 4 becomes publicly available it's not going to be sublime text 4 it's going to be sublime text the 4 is going away we only refer to it as sublime text 4 to remove all ambiguity with other versions of sublime that currently exist i would imagine that in the fullness of time we'll just refer to it as sublime text and maybe a build number on the end if we need to remove any ambiguity if you use sublime merge the other product by the same developers you might notice that it doesn't have a version number either and it's also licensed a different way, and that's changing in Sublime Text as well. Sublime Text, along with losing the version number, is having its license scheme changed to be more like how Sublime Merge is licensed. And that is to say that historically, a license for Sublime Text was for a specific version, major version of Sublime Text. So a license for Sublime Text 2 would give you access to Sublime Text 2, 2.1, 2.2, and so on. But to use Sublime Text 3, you would have had to purchase an upgrade. And similarly, the licensing scheme for Sublime used to be that if you had Sublime Text 3, you would get 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, and so on, and then pay an upgrade for 4. But that's being changed to be a scheme more like Sublime Merge, uh, in which you're paying for a, not a version number, but a period of updates instead, specifically a period of three years. So you pay today, and for the next three years, you get all updates that happen inside, you can use inside of your license. At the end of the three-year period, you make a decision. If you want to, you can pay another license fee to get another three years of updates going forward. Or you can decide to stay where you are. You still get to use the version that you have and every version that came before it. The license is still in perpetuity. It's not a subscription license. What's changing is how long you get updates for. And if you used Sublime Text 3 and you purchased your license early on, you got a lot of value for your dollar because there was a long period where Sublime Text 3 was in beta before it was even publicly released. Now, the intention behind this is the following. There are more developers for Sublime HQ, more engineers than there have ever been. Historically, it was just John, then Will was brought on board, and now Ben and Tim and David are engineers on the team as well. There's also Carrie in the support role. Now, you can imagine the situation where you have developers, you're paying them, you want to get 
money back for the work that you're paying them to do, right? So you come up with new features for your software and you work on them. You're paying your developers, hopefully a living wage to actually make those changes. And when you're done, what do you do? If you decide that whatever change you've just made, you want to get paid for and probably you want to get paid for your work, you make your users pay an upgrade fee. But that means that every time you make new features, there's going to be an upgrade fee. And there could be an uproar that you're making people upgrade too frequently, or they don't see the value in the upgrade fee. So what you actually do is take all of the changes you're making and bundle them up and hold them off to the side until you have enough changes made in order to justify the cost and expenditure for someone to upgrade their license to get those features which is historically how software tends to work, I would imagine, in this sort of situation. But it means that you're waiting a longer period of time for other changes to be made before things are made available to you. However, if the license scheme was changed that it's not version numbers that you're tied to, but a time base, then you are free to make a change and immediately release it because you know that there is a built-in time at which upgrades are going to happen and people are going to want to keep doing that to get your features, which is why things are changing here. It's a stated intention by the developers. Now, of course, at this point, we don't know what the upgrade fee might be for people that have had their license for longer than three years. I'm not a lawyer. Make sure you use the official web page in order to find that information if you're watching this before Sublime Text 4 becomes publicly available. But there is a veritable ton of cool new content in this build, and we're going to be covering it right here on the channel. So if you want to keep abreast of all the cool stuff that is happening in Sublime Text and why you're definitely going to want to pay whatever that upgrade fee happens to be, you're going to want to use the button down below my hit the thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon if you haven't already done so that you will be made aware when those videos become available on the channel and until the next video on the channel this is Oda Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day